speaking about um, you know the things that we have talked about about the um, uh, the box commercials, mm -hmm. we have with us the director for the commercial you've just mentioned. Yeah. So please welcome Adit Yat Mika. Hi. Hi. Adit Mika. Mika Mika. Hello. Good morning. Hi. Thanks yes. Good morning, me. Mika. Thank you for joining us. So. Um, We've got questions here about um, the, you know, um, the, the the videos that we just um, saw. Now, the first question is: um, Can you describe more about your creativity um, process, that um, which is for uh, commercials? Well, um, I think the idea itself is quite interesting because um, the big idea is that how. Breaking the beauty standard itself, you know. I mean, if you watch uh, skincare or perhaps makeup advertisement, you know, usually the model was like all those beautiful, glowing people. And then our idea was just use, you know, like a people who, who who look like you and me, you know, how how we're gonna use a common people to use, you know, the skincare itself. And then I was thinking that uh, okay, if the the main talent was those two people, and then we sh must make this advertisement you know, as crazy as possible, you know. So I remember I was uh, uh, being watch uh, Stephen Chow film as much as possible, mm -hmm. you know. So okay, that idea is interesting, and then we put it on the commercial, you know. So I think the most important part is that how to make this you know as much as eye catching as possible mm -hmm. you know as well as possible so in the end hopefully you know people will talk about it you mm. know because it's funny you know <laughs> people love fun stuff right yeah true true, true. Which, is, which is good yeah because you set the story with a fun way and a powerful message and Mika talking about the brand itself how do you convince the brand to approve the concept that are out there or unusual Ah, okay, that's that's quite interesting question. You know, um, I always say to you know fellow filmmakers or perhaps the younger filmmakers out there, you know, besides you know you understanding what a shot is, you know mm -hmm. your directing skills, there's also soft skills. You know, mm -hmm. there are ways to talk to people, there are ways to communicate to the clients. You know, mm -hmm. so instead of you know making them listen to your idea, you know, for example, uh, hey, listen to my idea, blah 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 blah. You know, that was wrong. The important part is to make. The, as if the idea was their own, you know. So oh, they'll okay. agree with anything you said because they think they come up with that, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's like a Jedi mind trick for that, you know. So like, oh, I come up with that, but actually you implemented that idea to them, you know. So that's you know, there's a bit, bit of soft skills on that, and that's as much as important as directing skills as well, you know. Okay, okay. Now, but Mika, before we move on to our next question, I'm, I'm really curious about. Why? Why do you love this field so much? I mean, what's what's so interesting about your field? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think because uh, by the end of the day, we tell stories. You know, I mean, we are human, are storytelling animals. Mm. You know, and then um, I remember when I was young. You know, I love to hear, and I always want to be a storyteller when I grow up. You know, because by the end of the day, it's it's a way to communicate your ideas your thought to other people and I think um, this I, I've been blessed you know uh, to work in this field because um, you entertain people and you know mm -hmm. that's big pahala you know oh there you go <laughs> yeah 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 it's yeah, a big pahala because you entertain people you know yeah. you, you, you make people happy or sometimes you make people sad you know <laughs> they're, they're a sad commercial but you move people emotion, that's the greatest excitement of all, I think. Right. Wow. Talking about uh, storytelling and when it's becoming a professional, you have to work with the brand. There is a thing that called budget. Mm. That's the digital... <laughs> You love it first? All right, that's the digital description over the past decade of like the budget that you receive to make a commercial. And if so, how do you work around it? Well, in a certain way, budget does important because oh. you know you know you talk about the equipment, you know how the scope of the project itself, you know. But 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 it <laughs> must not affect the creativity itself, you know. You know you cannot you know cannot price up you know what's in your brain, right? Mm -hmm. Like 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 I have an idea. How, how much is it? You cannot judge that. Yeah. Uh, so um, I think the digital disruption is being you know blessing in disguise. I mm -hmm. think because uh, when I was starting out like almost 10 years ago, I mean more than 10 years ago, um, 
commercials mostly like a TV commercial, you know, like this product is good, buy this product, right? It's quite hard to sell, mm. but the, the digital disruption tends people uh, consume, consume their news, consume their entertainment, you know, you know, like there are many platform today was like really, really out of the box, like for example, TikTok. Right. And the question itself is how you uh, sell products through that medium. So I think it's not a matter of budget, I think. It's the matter of how you tell the story itself, mm. you know. So how to work around it, you know, tell as much of, you know, interesting ideas as possible, I think, you know, because it's on how you adapt to the platform. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, if, if, if I know that the commercial going to air on TV, that's one way to do it. If I know the, air, uh, the commercial will air, air on uh, YouTube, there's another way to do it, you know. Mm. And if I, if the advertisement going to air on TikTok, like what, one minute video, and everything was, everyone was dancing around, right? So it's another way to do it because I, I'm a bit super, uh, several uh, commercials for TikTok as well, and it's very fast. It, it's for Gen, uh, you know, Gen Z, you know, very very young uh, demographic. So the I think the digital disruption just been blessing this guys because it, it challenges your creativity to so to you know it push your limit you know mm -hmm. and I think don't make you know budget become your excuse ah, I don't have budget for that you don't have budget for that no just push your cre creativity right. that's that's again is the beautiful part of it you know there's it another uh, fulfillment right that right. oh I, I able to do this you know. Yeah, yeah, I do make so. Make an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> but again, Mika, if you're, um, you know, you're about to do a project during this pandemic, of course, you've got lots of friends out there who are actually wanting to get involved with you or do, to do um, working with you, doing yeah. the business with you, actually. But again, um, regarding what Christy said about budget and also pandemic, <laughs> obviously, I'm sure 99%, or, you know, your friends are always saying, Mika, can you put the price lower, please? You know, just to haggle for your service, they will yeah, actually yeah. Um, ask for, uh, you know, a cheaper price to right. it. Right? Friendship price, right? Friendship <laughs> price, Christy said. True, okay. true, true, true. So, how does that go? So yeah, it's quite interesting because uh, since the pandemic, some of the you know big names agency, you know the the the, the international agency mostly, they have start to understood that the world are changing. You know, mm. the world is always changing, right? And so they start to adapt, uh, you know, to the situation. They start to understood that you know we cannot always make a TV commercial. You know, the big budget, mm. one billion plus budget. And they started to uh, adapt to like a smaller scale, you know, a digital first advertisement. So, uh, on how to survive that, well, I always say that, uh, well, you must understood the limitation. Like, oh yeah, yes, I said before that there are no <laughs> there are no limit in creative creativity, but there are limits on technical aspect. Yeah, you know, you, you, we we cannot again expect you know, you know, uh, have like a big budget shoot everything was green screen or we have you know you know shoot in you know Bali or there you know we must think you know on a small scale but again push the creativity to the limit so the technical was small but the idea was big you know MS Glue is a good example with that because I only shot it in what one location green screen I mean even the green skin was like a jokes you know so so it, to be honest, the budget was not that huge, you know, for, for the, the, the MS Glow advertisement. But, as you can see, the, the effect was quite, quite huge, Alhamdulillah, you know. You know, it's, it's on New York Times Square. Yep, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not to about it. <laughs> it's on Times Square. Yeah, you did it. <laughs> Congratulations, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and talking about our friends, one thing for sure, if they are truly our friends, they must be paid more <laughs> than the customer. Is the real friendship price, right? <laughs> I can see Mika really? loud. Okay, uh, Mika, what is the difference yes. between directing a commercial and a short film? Wow, wow, that's that's quite a philosophical question, I think. <laughs> um, well, when I was young, right, you know, being a young filmmaker out from you know film film school, you know, I always thought I don't want to make commercial. I want to make film. I want mm. my film to you know screen at Cannes or Berlinale or, or you know some 
big festival, you know, that's always everyone dreams, I think. But as I get older, I start to realize that, you know, it's the same thing. We mm. tell stories. You know, by the end of the day, you know, a good commercial, I think, is a good stories, you know, good storytelling. Because by the end of the day, you're not getting told that buy this thing, but you're telling stories. But at the end of the day, oh, that product was good, mm-hmm. you know. So, um, in terms of short film and, um, and, and advertisement, you know, both are uh, have like a short duration, mm-hmm. you know, like for example, like a two minute, two minute stops, you know, in, in, in TVC, we got to tell stories in 90 seconds or less. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, in digital, perhaps you could stretch it to three minutes. That's a short film format. You know, you All gotta right. tell stories as much as possible, cram as much information as possible. But mm-hmm. in the end of the day, it must be as much entertaining. Right. You know, we want to be entertained. Like, like as you said in, in the beginning of the segment. You know, you know, in Thailand, people always make people laugh. You know, mm-hmm. and in China, there are stories about. You know, women, you know, in India, it's stories about uh, uh, equality, you know. In the end of the day, it's all stories, you know. Good commercial, make good stories. True, true. It's all about the good stories, right? I know. True, and true. Who's behind the making of it? Exactly. <laughs> now, um, we all know that um, you are, your signature style is actually in uh, the uh, black comedy itself. Mm-hmm. Now, are you really convenient in that, in, in that, you know, area, or do you want to expand? Now, if so, if you are still um, convenient in that area, what's the reason behind the black comedy as your signature style? Mm-hmm. So it's, it's quite interesting, you know, because sometimes people say that there are no signature in commercial mm-hmm. because it's mm-hmm. all you know clients demand, right? That's that's the the cliche of making an advertisement. But like as you said, it's not. You know, you could put your own, you know, or move there. You could. You, you could put your trademark there, and that, that's I always want to say to to, to the younger filmmaker, you know, my, my my fellow filmmaker, like, you know, it's like it's like a chameleon. You always change, you know. The chameleon always change. They they adapt to the situation, but in the end, it's the same. It's chameleon, right? You know. And then um, why I put like a black comedy in there? Um, simple. People love to get laughed. Mm-hmm. You know, it's the easy way in a comedy. Comedy in general is the easy way to tell like a heavy message, important message to the mass audience. Why? Two reasons. We love to hear stories. Number two, we love to hear jokes. <laughs> Who doesn't want to get laugh in this world? Yeah. Everyone yeah. wants to get laugh, <laughs> right? Like yes. <laughs> you know, you know. By the, again, by the end of the day, we are storytelling animals. You know. Especially in Indonesia. Mm-hmm. In Indonesia, if you want to get your message across, yeah. tell it in jokes. Mm-hmm. Don't you ever ever tell like like this is you know when we were kids, you know, you know our parents always said do this, don't do that, don't do that, you know, and mm-hmm. we get bored with it, right. right? But if you tell it in stories, like si kancil anak nakal, oh, we know the morality of the stories. Don't do that. It's same with comedy. Mm-hmm. If you tell it in jokes, people will not realize they're being told. People mm-hmm. just thought it's just stupid thing or you know a dumb thing that they saw on TV. Mm-hmm. But actually, the idea is there. And and like for example, in MS Glow advertisement, the idea was that everyone could be kanteng, you know, <laughs> everyone could be handsome. <laughs> you know, we are trying to break the industry standard. If we put a serious tone on it, in it, like like really serious, you know, like a like a typical uh, a skincare commercial. It will not work. I guarantee it, it will not work because we put a serious tone in it. But because we put a comment in it, people are not realizing. You know, they're watching a commercial. We, people were thought like Babe, Chabita, and Marcel just, you know, two guys do, you know do, making a stand-up routine, you know, like comedy routine. That that's I think. Why I, 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 I choose, you know, a black comedy, you know, as my like a quote signature move because <laughs> it's the easy way to tell stories. Yeah. Especially heavy important stories. 
Right. Yes, people always love to love, especially in this pandemic. Oh, yeah. And of course, uh, comedy and storytelling have a strong connection. So Mika, as a director, do you think that the advertisement produced in Southeast Asia have their own distinct characteristic? And if yes, can you give our example? Mm -hmm. So, um, it, it's quite interesting because I work in Singapore, uh, Sing Singapore-based company before. Uh, and I realized something that we as a Southeast Asian always put our tradition in, mm. you know, in advertisement, you know, and, and every country have their own in a tradition that we not realize. Like, for example, I just, uh, I just realized like Hari Raya, uh, Hari Lebaran in Indonesia, mm. uh, Hari Raya Lebaran is very big in a Muslim uh, uh uh, predominant society, you know, like for example, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Singapore, uh, right? And they're always a commercial in Hari Raya. Mm. They're always a commercial, you know. I I, I met a, a Hari Raya commercial in Singapore before, you know, because there's quite a, a big uh, Malay population there. Uh, in, in Indonesia, you know, you know all, all production companies, all agency were racing to make a commercial in Hari Raya because it's the highest consumption. Uh, uh, consumption in, in a year, you know, everyone buying things in in, in, in Lebaran, mm -hmm. right? Even in uh, let's say, for example, uh, Singapore, uh, where where it's uh, more the like, uh, the Chinese population were, were were larger. What's the biggest advertisement there? Chinese New Year. Mm. The Chinese New Year budget for uh, advertisement is very big. You know, <laughs> really, it's the biggest thing there. You mm. know, everyone was racing for uh, the Chinese New Year, so. Why? Because we always put our tradition first. So each Asian people, I realize, always put their tradition first. You know, in each of their countries, you know, perhaps people in Thailand have their own uh, a, a tradition here. And, and, and I bet it's the biggest budget for advertisement there. You know, people in Vietnam, for example, I, I bet their, 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 their Hari Raya is the, is the what? The signature uh, advertisement there. So, so yeah, so we always put tradition in, I mean, we as Asian, always put our heritage first that's i think that's the reason ah that's okay. nice mm. that's nice all right nice. mika mika so um thank you very much for sharing with us this thank morning you. we've learned a lot and we wish you all the best for your upcoming project yes stay safe thank you. Mika. and thank, thank you thank you too. so much for remind us to love